Extrusion is a process by which long straight metal parts can be produced. The only problem with the extrusion is that it will produce only uniform process. It can be solid or it can be hollow also. That entirely depends upon the die we are using here. So any section like this can be extruded. So we want a section like this. So you have to make a die like this. Your section will remain constant. Even if you have this section is also possible. So normally you can find the sections in aluminum window. It produces compressive stress and the shear stress. But the shear stress is of negligible quantity as compared to what? Compressive. But does not produce tensile stress. No tensile stress. So what exactly here is that? We have a billet here. This one is called as work billet. This one is a container. This one is a die as shown here. The initial diameter of billet is D0 and we have a ram here. So we apply the force to this one. So this force is distributed over the pressure that is equal to P. And if you apply the force, then the ram will try to move in the rightward direction. When the ram will move in the rightward direction, there is a friction that occurs on this surface as well as the friction will occur over this surface. And now the die is enlarged. So no friction occurs because your part will get separated as well as the we have a friction on the periphery also. So if the ram will move in a forward direction, the extruded part that is this part is called as extruded part will also move in the same direction. The initial length of billet is L0, we will say here L0. The final length of extruded portion is very very large because the die is smaller in size as compared to what billet. The major problem in this extrusion is the friction occurring over the surface. This type of extrusion is called as forward extrusion and we have a extruded portion like this. So initial diameter is D0, initial length of billet is L0, the final length of extruded part is LF and the diameter of extruded part is DF. So D0 is the initial diameter of billet, L0 is the initial length, LF is the final length and this one is final diameter. Sometimes the protection is provided over this surface that is called as dummy block. This one is called as dummy block. It is usually made up of steel. In the case of forward extrusion, we are applying a force in this direction. Therefore, the billet will move in a forward direction and the extruded part will also move in the same direction. In all metal forming processes, volume is always remained constant. So, we have V equals to initial cross section is pi by 4 into D0 square multiplied by L0 that is the initial volume of billet. So final volume of extruded part is pi by 4 into DF square into LF. Practically speaking DF is very very small as compared to D0. The final diameter is very small as compared to D0. So final length is very very large length as compared to initial length. So extruded portion is thin and very long. So extruded portion is thin and very long portion. Now since it is a very thin and very long portion and it has a weight is distributed over, over the entire length. So this one is a sort of what UDL and it is the case of uh, cantilever. Bend in this direction. If, there, if you do not want any bend, you have to give the support to this. So the roller supports are given to this like this. So we required support for this. If we talk about the velocity, the initial velocity of billet is V0 and the final velocity of Vf. So we have again the same equation which is the discharge equation is pi by 4 into D0 square multiplied by V0 equals to pi by 4 into Df square multiplied by Vf. Again we have same relation of D0 and Df. So velocity of extruded part is very very large as compared to V0. So we have to very fast collect this part. So one term is called as extrusion ratio written as A is a initial diameter that is A0 divided by AF is same as pi by 4 DO square divided by pi by 4 DF square. So your pi by 4 will cancel and you left with DO square divided by DF square. Extrusion ratio is very very high is around 40 for steel to around 400 for aluminium. The true strength is defined as epsilon t is ln. This time we are interested in area reduction. So it is defined as A0 by AF is same as. So this one is ln of D0 square divided by DF square. So we can take out two common ln of D0 divided by DF. Right. Ram pressure. Ram pressure is given by 
that is P is your average flow stress multiplied by true strand. So stress if multiplied by epsilon t will be equals to what? Ram pressure and the ram pressure is uniformly distributed over this area on D0 or on DF on D0. So we required the extrusion force is P multiplied by A0 that is sigma bar multiplied by epsilon t multiplied by A0. What of friction occurring over this surface? That is the disadvantage of forward extrusion. So we have a friction over this surface. To reduce the friction, we are using solid lubricants. To reduce friction, solid lubricants are used like molten glass or phosphate base. Molten glass and phosphate base. This one is white in color. Applications are aluminum frames for doors, window, curtain rod and channels. I think you remember always that this extrusion speed is very very high as compared to what? Inlet velocity. So as far as the rolling is considered, rolling and the extrusion is considered, the extrusion speed is very high as compared to what? Rolling operation. That is therefore for large scale of manufacturing, we are preferring extrusion. So last point is extrusion speed is greater than the rolling operation. In the case of indirect extrusion, this one is your billet and this time the billet is stationary. In previous case, your billet was moving and therefore your friction problem has been solved. There is no friction in this case. Whereas in the case of forward extrusion, so this part is moving continuously. Container is stationary, billet is moving. So whenever we are relative motion, there is a friction here. And in this case, the container and the billet is fixed. So there is no friction over this one. So this process required less force as compared to the direct extrusion. That is the main advantage of indirect. Second difference is that your ram is moving in this direction, your extruded part is coming in the opposite direction. So that is the other difference. Our billet and the extruded part moves in opposite direction. Rest equations are same. But the problem here is that since your ram is hollow, so the strength of the ram is decreased. So you cannot apply very large force to the indirect extrusion. That is the main difficulty. The product prepared are collapsible tubes. Collapsible tubes like toothpaste, ointment, all these are manufactured with indirect extrusion. Aluminium cans, can, uh, brass billet is to be extruded from, what is the initial diameter? 100 mm. What is the temperature is 700. Extrusion constant is K, 250 mega. What is the final diameter? Tm. So what is the true strength? Ln of A0 by F, 2 times Ln of D0 by Df. So how much is force required? K time. A0 or A final? A0 or A final? A0. 250 into pi by 4 into 100 square into 1.386. 2.72 10 to the power 6 Newton or 2.72 mega Newton. A round billet of 100 mm length L0 100 mm initial diameter is 50 mm is extruded and extrusion ratio is what 4 average flow stress is what 300 we want to find out ram pressure ram pressure is simply given by average stress multiplied by true strain average stress is 300 true stress is ln of A0 by A final answer is 415 mega Pascal. In a wire drawing operation, diameter of steel wire is reduced to 10 mm. So 10 mm to 8 mm. So D0 is 10 mm. DF is 8 mm. Average flow stress is 400 mega Pascal. We want to find out ideal force that is drawing force. Drawing force is given by average stress multiplied by true strain multiplied by final area. Let true strain nikal lijiye. True strain is 2 times ln of is it D0 by DF or A0 by AF is 2 times ln of 10 by 8. 0.44. 0.446 so we can find out the force now this one is 400 true strain is 0.446 area is 8 square pi by 4 8 square 8973 so answer is 8.9 kilonewton